Hi, I'm Lee Sizzle. And I'm Eugene Egghead. And we're here to welcome you to At The Movies. Tonight we'll be previewing some of the newest shows for this summer that are coming out that will be the, guaranteed to be the hot picks. And some won't be. Our first movie is the cheaply made horror film Poultry Heist. This one was directed on location somewhere out in the boonies. Let's take a look now, shall we? I felt this was another cheap teenage horror film, obviously with no social bearings on anything that makes sense in the world. It's cheap, useless. I thought that the cow, just in the background, how they left the natural sounds of their surroundings, it was just perfect. How can you say that? That was worthless. The actor, he didn't know where he was going. There's no plot, no script, nothing to the story. Of course there is. It's beautiful. It's all emotional. Everything is there you ever wanted to see in a true movie. Well, I give it thumbs down. I give it a thumbs up. And a foot. Hi. Remember me? I used to sell the Encyclopedia Britannica. But because I got B plus on my term paper, they fired me. So, I'm here to endorse this globe. Now, not only does this globe show you where places like the Soviet Union are, but it also shows you where Africa is. And it shows you where Shiraf is. The other thing it doesn't do for you, though, is tell you where Mandibulo is, which I learned in the Encyclopedia Britannica, which doesn't apply to here anyways. But it also does tell you the time and tell you the degree of angle that the rotation is at. Now, along with this wonderful new globe, we'll tell you this world atlas. Now, this world atlas has all the major cities of the United States and the world. It tells you in detail about the different continents. And it tells you about their flags. And it tells you about the cities in general. And it gives you romance. So not only does it do that, but it's great for reflecting things that are being thrown at you. Now get that 800 number up here quick. Oh, I, it was just perfect. Movies like that are screwing up today's America's youth. I mean, you know, it was natural. Worse it than Bart Simpson, any... okay? Oh, Bart Simpson. No. Oh, Bart... we're back. Oh. Hi. We're back from the commercial, and now we'd like to interview for you another movie. It was called Death of a Salesman. This was recorded, and it only took about, I think, a month to record. And it wasn't a very, how should we say it? was a very deep, symbolic movie. It was very simplistic. Anyways, let's go to that shot now. this movie was one of the greatest movies of the summer. The twisting, stressful trauma all the characters were going through, the complex characterizations, the intensity of the whole film, it struck me. It was beautiful. It was, it was beyond belief, better than any movie I have ever seen in my life. Simply amazing. It was not. It was right there in black and white, the whole story. He goes up there, he knocks on the door, he sells the room to her, and she shoots him. You can't understand what, what the salesman was going through, the deep personal conflicts and the inward transgressions of everyone in this film. It was just beautiful. Oh, yeah, and like the last film wasn't any hotter than that, eh? You're going to fight me again about that one again, aren't you? Look, about that, it's cheap, worthless, and... Back to this film. At least it had color. <sighs> anyway, I gave that last one a thumbs down. I can't believe it. Well, maybe you're right. Okay, I'll give it a thumbs down too. 
Our next film was a $60 million budgeting. It was made by Paradigm Studios, Edward Spood Hands. Let's take a look at it now. Kids, you know, I don't think we've been spending enough family time together. I think we should get away this weekend and go and do something. Well, I think that's a wonderful idea, honey. My, that looks good. Doesn't it? Could you please pour me some? Well, why don't you do it, Ed? Okay. I give it a thumbs up. That movie was a $60 million flop. That's just right down the tubes. I give that movie a thumbs down all the way. It's not gonna make it anywhere, man. Now we have a special news introduction for all you people. Oh, hi there. This is Dan... Uh... Dan Clark reporting for WBUZ News. And today, with us, we have a special guest. His name is... Mikhail. Mikhail Brushkov. Yes, from the Soviet University of Leningrad. Yes, and today he's here to explain his theory on why the Titanic sunk. Now, Doctor, can you explain this to all our viewers out there on why Titanic sunk? Yes. You see, back when the Titanic originally was set up, it fell. Yes. You know, okay. It, set, so it, fell. it fell. And so we used a different piece. But see, when it was sailing, it was going along, and the foreign object came from outer space and did it. And it so sunk. apparently a large object. No, 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 not a large it's object. Like a big boat a, like that. A very small object. Like, how do this? Like the size of a paper one. It was a golf ball. Oh, okay. You see, when the astronauts launched, were launched, in, in 1969, you see, they were, they're up to play the game of golf on the moon, right? Remember when he hit this golf ball up? Uh -huh. Well, you see, in space-time continual, the golf ball would have gone very rapidly and it would keep spinning and spinning until it gets very fast and very fast in motion. Uh -huh. And then it would come down. It would not burn up, but it would like rather bounce off itself as a reflection because of the little white coat. Oh, uh, you're a thing. Yeah. It went right through the atmosphere. It came down at a very rapid pace back in time and it locked the Titanic. Right. Those are just the stupidest shows I've ever had to preview in my whole life, man. Jeez, this like, and there goes my mic. Oh, I hate when that happens. God, all these technical things. I just hate doing this show all the time, man. Get my foot to The losers we have to work with. I don't get paid enough around here. They don't even pay me enough money. They really don't. And no one watches the show. Why are we going on? Anyway, just a minute. I lost my mic someplace. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's decent. Man, is the news bulletin over yet? No, it's still going. <laughs> I love these time killers. <laughs> Thank you. This has W. This has been a WBUZ news brief. Hi, welcome back to At the Movies with Sizzle and Egbert. And this movie that we have up for you now is Phantom of the Soap Opera. Very timely cliche. Let's go to it. This was one of the few movies 
that's a sleeper, you know? I mean, it's just, it was just a great, I don't know, it's a great movie at the end, but up until that point, it just is so slow moving, I just can't believe it. For once, I have to agree with you, but it is a classic. This theme has been used over and over, and I still love it. This is, this is the only movie I can truly give a thumb sideways to. I'll agree, except I'll go diagonally. Our next movie is Dancing with Dogs, Cats, and... Let me see. Dog, cats, and... The third animal was alligators. No, no, no. <laughs> that was the most saddest movie I've ever saw. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, hey. Oh, go on. Sorry. Uh, this movie, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the few that really got me right someplace around there. Yeah, I am hungry. How about you? I, got, me, got me right down the stomach. Yeah. My popcorn ran out. I, I never had any popcorn to begin with. Oh, sorry. I would have shared. Should have asked. Anyway, oh, oh we got to give a rating, dude. I give it a oh. thumbs up, yeah. I give it a thumbs up, too. Okay. It's one of the few good ones. Good choice. Um, now we're going to a, uh, commercial? Yeah, we'll go to a commercial. Good idea. Remember me? I'm the one who used to see those annoying Britannic ads for you on television. But, I also was doing those globes and selling that free atlas along with it. Unfortunately, I got some wounds from that and I didn't like that job. So instead of quitting, they actually kind of fired me. Quit fooling around with that camera. Now what I'm here to do today and show you this wonderful new recording equipment that we've made at our studios. The great thing about it is that it can record anything you want. Just listen to this lovely sound. Any kind of guitar music that you want, anytime, any kind of drum stuff, this beauty does it all. It's only 250 and with it, we'll throw in free speakers and CD player. Now look, you maybe drop that CD. Now also, your viewing pleasure, sec, we have a note from the editor. For your entertainment pleasures, we're about to nuke the studio. Nuke the Thanks. studio! Oh! Where are you going? What are you doing? Wait. Get it back in. Where's that 800 number? Go back. Okay. I tell you, sometimes those commercials are almost better than the movies we preview. Wow. <sighs> Who wants to introduce this one? I'll let you introduce it, Ed. Thank you. Our last film is Aliens. Uh, a more of a controversial film, if you will. Sort of, well, you'll see. Now that was a movie I could watch over and over and over and over again, no matter how many times, it just still gets me every time I see it, man. And I think it depicts a growing problem in America. Canadian immigrants, you know I hate them. <laughs> yeah. And even though I wasn't in the, I'll still have to give it a thumbs up. Ditto. So join so us next, next time, time at, at the, the movies. movies. Same, same time, same, same channel. Same. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and think about sunny weather. Happy I hate it when that happens.